travel around the petal and come up inside the brown line that I've already put down till I get to here and then walk out to the end of my stitch or the end of my shape rather make my leaf alter the angle and I've still got a split satin stitch in it so M I'm looking for the black line 7.5 now I'm going to go in and I'm going to tell the program that's not so broad I really don't want a split satin there. I'm going to take the auto split off. There we go. If it was 8, 9, 10, then yes, I'd have put, left the auto split in. I read a comment on another group once that they loved the look of that padded effect that they saw in designs. How did, how was it achieved? and it was the split stitch in the wide satins and the owner of the group didn't really know what the person asking the question was asking but she had provided a link to a site and I went and I had a look and I knew instantly what it was and because I knew the software that it was made with because I knew who the designer was I could say to her it was a split satin and actually it's it was this kind of effect but she liked it and I can't stand it it's okay if you're doing a large piece like a petal on something then it gives quite an interesting effect but when it's on a small shape like this, no if you're that little bit too wide you slim your shape down a bit okay so now we go on a little walk over to here and then up the center of that leaf and if you do find you're too wide for a satin stitch use a weave fill stitch and go for number two don't know if where I put it right that's split satin let me just turn on okay these are all worked in we fill stitch for a very good reason they're too broad this is a big design and yet when they're stitched and if you saw the lettering the lettering looks like satin and it is all weave fill the only satin is the little bit of border I've got around it and I don't know where I put that open oh, that was the rose challenge I didn't do these for Trevor I did them for me I wouldn't have put them in there mags there it is it's a nice obvious place to put something isn't it when it's yours bread keeper it's lettering and it's weave fill because it's miles too big to be a satin stitch and yet when you see it stitched it looks like satin it doesn't look like a weave fill and the reason for that I chose I think it is number two object details yes you get a flatter look you don't get that dreadful heavy ribbing that you get with number one and it looked much much nicer than doing it in solid satin stitch because I'll be quite true to you I'm not in the least bit struck on satin I don't find it's not in big areas I don't think it's that attractive for stitch I don't need this one. This is a small split satin. 
having said I don't think it's an attractive one. Uh, this one I think I did in Radial Fill. Let's just open up objects. You know, I've done it in the normal fill. I thought I'd done it in radial. Well, not to worry. And then if you saw the lettering for that one, um, mushers. Oh no, that's mushrooms. Spud Stora. <coughs> that's what we call potato spuds. And you can see all my jumps. Actually, most of these are colour changes. That isn't. That's because these were. You couldn't. I couldn't travel to them. I think yellow was my last colour. In the actual flower design, it was. I always do my lettering before I do designs as well. That way, you don't get the distortion. You do the design first, and you'll find your lettering goes all over the place. Always stitch your lettering before you stitch your design. And this is all weave fill, and yet it looks like it's so smooth when it's stitched. It really is lovely. So I'd say to all of you, think about using a weave fill for a wide lettering. Fill to where's the linen. Spots, onion, mushers, bread. Bread, bread, bread. Where's the linen keep? Oh, don't tell me. I've lost one. I've lost a design. And that was the linen keeper. New folder. Daisies, herons, herons and tree. No. You fold it to. Nothing in there. Jellyfish. Oh, this is one I'm still working on. The other alternative when you've got white satin. I started this one before my grandson came. And it's a jellyfish. And because the satin was too wide, I thought, well, and it wasn't filled in in the graphic. This is a graphic set that I bought. Um, I thought, no, I just, I don't want to have blank spots. So I used the turning angle tool, column fill. And if I turn that off, and I turn the grid off, and it's on a black background because I intend stitching it on a black background, so I like to see, not my colours, because I won't actually be using these colours. I use colours so as I can differentiate between where I am and where I'm going. Um, I wanted to see how the embroidery looked on a dark background. Was I going to have enough stitches? Was it getting a bit too weak? So, but those are other things you can use besides using a satin stitch. And I quite like the contour effect of the parallel fill tool. I think it gives a great effect. And that's the stitch simulation view. And that netting is um, one of my own motifs that I created. I still have to get this one finished. But my grandson arrived, interrupted me, and I haven't been able to get back to it yet. But I will do, because I've got a complete set of them to do. And I'm going to embroider them, and I'm doing it on black silk, and I'm going to put them... I'm not certain where, but I will put them somewhere in the house because I don't have any embroidery anywhere. Except now I've got my bread keeper and my potato storer 
in my kitchen being used at this moment. Okay, that's a bit too much lollygagging and I am going to close this video now. I'll finish these leaves. When I bring you back in, I'll be doing the journey back and putting the seed pod in here and then coming back along so as I can finish this shape and bring my end point up to there ready to flip it over so I've got a mirror image on the other side. So I'll see you in the next video.